Hey there, Kevin Kelly with a quick video tip for you today. I know that generally speaking, most real estate professionals do try to get their clients connected with a loan officer as soon as possible. But since you guys are on the front lines and are often speaking with your buyers about their scenarios before we do, it's a good idea to have some understanding of guidelines and documentation requirements just in case certain subjects come up in your initial discussions. So today, I just wanted to shed some light on how we define large deposits when we're looking at a borrower's bank statements. Now, as you may know, we generally go back two months these days on a purchaser's bank statements in terms of sourcing their funds for down payment and closing costs, which is what we call our seasoning requirement. Now, what happened before that seasoning period generally won't come into play. So underwriters don't really care about money going out of the account, but they'll be scrutinizing all the deposits very carefully. Of course, they expect to see the normal periodic deposits for payroll, retirement benefits and the like. And typically there may be some additional miscellaneous cash deposits here and there for various reasons. But there are certain thresholds with all the major programs out there, which if crossed will trigger a need to explain and document that deposit. So for FHA and VA, that figure is equal to 1% of the sales price. So obviously on a transaction with a sales price, of say $400,000, any deposits over $4,000 would need to be explained and documented. Now for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, that threshold is based on the borrower's monthly income and anything over 50% of that amount would meet the requirement. So for example, if someone makes 60,000 per year, then that's 5,000 per month and any deposits over 2,500 would need to be explained. They can also look at total deposits in a month so for example, several cash deposits of $1,000 each, which total $3,000 could also trigger the need for further explanation and documentation. Now, worst case, if the deposits cannot be sourced, then we do have the option of simply backing them out of the available balance. And as long as they still had enough money to purchase, then it's basically a non-factor. But if that causes them to be short, they will need to look for additional ways to make up the difference, such as a gift, 401k loan, et cetera. Now these guidelines are always subject to change. So please always check with your loan officer. And whenever you have these types of questions come up and encourage your borrowers to do the same. And please feel free to reach out to me anytime I can be a service as well. Thanks and have a great day.